Welcome back guys to uh, Project Finance. So today we're gonna go through my M1 Finance um, portfolio that I made the other night. Um, I was literally up like at 1 a.m. like picking stocks and stuff like that. And I'm um, just doing a little research before I had to buy all the, the shares this morning at 7 a.m. If you guys don't know M1 Finance, they only trade once per day. It's really bad to keep rebalancing your account. They are the one that buys and sells your stock. So you don't have control of like what price point you wanna buy and sell your stocks at. You just put a percentage that you want it at. So like you might be selling Amazon stock at a loss and then buying an AT&T stock that's like at a high point right now. So you can't really foresee that when you're doing the percentages and stuff like that. That's one of the cons of M1 Finance. But yeah, today we'll just go through like my account and I'll explain to you guys um, why I chose those stocks and what I plan to do with it in the future. Also, I said that in my last video that it's going to be a $10,000 account. Right now it's at $4,000. Um, I'm moving my money from my high yield savings account to this account. Right now, I, I just transfer 4,000 from my regular bank account. So that's why it's at 4,000. So let's just jump right into it. So we're gonna go through M1 Finance right here. This is the website. I used the app last night. The app's kind of hard to use if you don't know what you're looking for. Um, I'll go through the app some other time, but right now we'll go through the website. Um, so you just log in. I checked it earlier this morning. I was at 39.99, 39.99. So like a dollar down, but let's see what we have here. I'm actually down $16 right now on um, the market or $15.52. The market hasn't been so good this morning or today. So yeah, this is the first day. You don't plan to make money on your first day. Usually it's, it's a long-term kind of thing. So I'm not really too worried about um, being down $16. Uh, earlier this month, I think like March-ish when they closed down America or closed down California, I was down like three, 4,000 on my personal accounts. and. Um, about another three, 4,000 on like my retirement account. So for $15, kind of nothing in in that respect. So we'll go through uh, my slices or my pies here. So I just did 50% for um, ETFs, which is like the Vanguard stuff. I pretty much invested like almost everything in Vanguard. And then um, I have a 25% in dividend hunting, which is 7% in monthly um, dividends. So this is pretty much to have a steady in income every month. And then I have another 25% in growing pies, which is like, Companies that I believe that are gonna do well. Um, right now, I just have a utility, so I'll go. In, we'll go through each of them since um, this is my first time showing my pies. I, like I said earlier, I plan to put this to ten thousand, and I'll just leave it there, and hopefully it'll grow. Um, I don't have a goal in mind yet, but um, maybe I'll say it in the next video. I haven't actually looked at the numbers and see what's realistic by end of the year. But yeah, let's go through my pies. So I put aggressive ETF pies because these are. Um, Aggressive means that the percentage I put on the stocks are a little higher than if it's something more moderate. I think if it was more moderate, it would be like um, 30% in, in um, S&P and uh, like uh, 10 to 15% in the bonds. So I have 40% VOO, it's um, Vanguard's SPY, it's just large companies and stuff like that. 15% LQD, which are corporate bonds. Then I have 15% in VEA, which is for developed markets, which is like Samsung and stuff like that. Pretty much out of sea companies, but in um, developed countries. So like Korea and Japan and like uh, Europe. And then I have 15% um, in VB, which is uh, small companies. I have 5% in bonds, um, government bonds. And I have 5% in real estate. And then I have 5% in VWO, which is out of sea companies, but in developing countries, places like Africa and stuff like that. My reasoning behind the, these uh, ratios is because uh, I expect the SPY to eventually come back up. So uh, right now it's pretty much like all time low. Um, well, a couple months ago or a couple of weeks ago, but now it's like kind of crawling back up. So, but eventually it will be back to what it is normally. If not, then the whole economy is going to collapse. So my money's useless at that point anyways. So I have 15% in um, corporate bonds. Same thing. You, I, I hope that the government um, the government's going to bail out uh, large firms. So corporate companies will still give out their dividends. Um, hence the corporate bonds should still be going up. Um, actually today it went up about 0.34%. Uh, VA developed markets. Um, I put 15% over um, emerging markets, where it's only 5%. Even though they're both out of sea companies, um, my my uh, thought process was that other countries are doing a lot better than us. Um, they did a lot of testing in coronavirus prior to us, um, like Korea and Japan and China. They kind of like opened back up already, so I expect them to kind of be climbing the market for them will climb back up. So. Um, I'm investing more in them than in places where um, they can't get testing like third world countries or developing countries. I won't say third world countries because it sounds kind of bad, but um, developing countries, they don't have testing and um, they don't have the means to kind of find 
uh, the cure on their own and test the, the vaccines stuff like that. So I put 5% only on them. But I still want to be in their market just in case uh, in the future I, I can I can always change it. So it's good to know kind of the trends right now because um, the longer you invest in something, the longer you see the history of it. So I just want to be in the market for now. Same thing with small companies. They released the CARE Act. So uh, small companies are, are getting their 10,000, up to $10,000 in loans. Um, so I know that a lot of big companies like the Lakers and um, Shake Shack, they gave back their money that the government gave them. So there's going to be more money to disperse to the small companies. So hopefully they'll stay alive. And then real estate and treasury bonds. Um, if you guys didn't know, the interest rates were getting cut like left and right. So I don't see the bonds being, um, government bonds paying out that much or um, going up in price. That's why it's at 5%. I just want to leave it there just to learn um, a little bit more about it with the trends. And then same thing with um, real estate. Uh, I think eventually real estate is going to go down um, as well, especially when um, time like this is tough, like people are losing their jobs. The only uh, liquid fund they have is in their house. So people are going to have to start starting to sell their houses and perhaps move um, to a smaller house or maybe move out of their state where they can afford um, a living. So a lot of m people's money is actually held up in their house. Um, so that's why if, if you're renting, you should buy a house because you kind of have like a backup fund in your house. But yeah, that's pretty much my aggressive um, ETF pie. Um, it was more moderate, like obviously uh, the bonds and the real estate will, uh, will be higher, especially the bonds will be higher, probably in around the 10, 15% um, range. But yeah, this is more of the aggressive ETF. So that's my uh, ratios and my um, explanations. So let's go back here and we'll see my next one. Um, dividend hunting. I haven't really looked at too much dividend hunting. Um, these, these two are from my Robinhood account. I, I have these two already on my Robinhood account. So I have a little experience on these two. AGNC is a pretty steady stock. I had it for almost about six months now. And with dividend stocks, all you wanted to do is just stay the same. You don't want to go up or down. You don't care for that. All you care about is it stay the same and then you make money off the dividends. And with AGNC, the dividend yield is um, 12%, which is pretty insane for um, something that's really cheap, 1227. So I have about uh, like 100 stocks, like 100 to 200 stocks of these on my Robinhood account. Um, but it's a monthly dividend, uh, means that you're coming to compound uh, really, really quickly. So um, yeah, that's why I got that one. Same thing with um, GOF. GOF is a little worse than um, AGNC, but um, it has a little higher dividend yield uh, at 14.01%, which is also pretty insane. And it's also a, a monthly dividend as well. So um, this pie is just pretty much for um, dividend hunting, as it says, uh, monthly, monthly wise. So that's it for dividend hunting. Let's go to my last pie, um, growing pie. Um, so I have a pretty much <laughs> utilities. Um, I just have the Starbucks here randomly just cause um, I have it on my uh, my Merrill Edge account. So I just want to keep track of it on here as well. See how it's doing. Um, but yeah, uh, Starbucks is 2.14 dividend yield, not bad. Uh, I just have 10% here just to keep track of like um, keep track of it, similar to how I'm doing it on the, the ETFs, just to keep track of it. And WM is the waste management. It's um, the waste management actually that we use in um, around my area too. So I believe that utilities can go under because we are need utilities no matter what. Somehow the government's going to bail them out or if they're doing bad, they're going to bail them out. And um, their dividend is not too bad, 2.18%. I believe these are quarterly too. Uh, I know for sure AT&T is quarterly. Um, AT&T is one of my favorite stocks. It's at 6.83% uh, before the collapse was at 5%, which is really, really good for a utility company that's going to be around forever unless it gets bought out at a higher price, like um, when T-Mobile bought out, um, I believe the Sprint. So I don't think at and is going to go down anytime soon. Um, right now, it's actually a really good time to buy. It's only at 29.90. I think it went up to like 35, 37 before the collapse. So yeah, that's pretty much all for my um, N1 Finance dividend pies. Uh, I might add a couple more stuff in here once I get the next deposit. I'm planning to deposit another six thousand dollars, make a solid ten thousand, so we can keep track of where we're at. So you see my this video and see the next video is four thousand to ten thousand. I didn't grow six thousand within uh, two days. Got to move some money around to put money into here. Uh, right now, there all my money's in my um, my Goldman Sachs, which is a high yield interest fund. It's at 1.3 percentage. I'm probably gonna move it out of there just to put it in here because I believe they're gonna cut those, those rates 
pretty soon. I had three other high yield saving accounts as well, and they all cut cut to like 0.3%. Um, it was Betterment, uh, Wealthfront, and SoFi. I think SoFi is like a 0.1% right now, uh, which is like horrible. Um, but yeah, if you if you're just putting money in like Bank America or Chase savings account. Um, I would recommend moving that out at least to like a SoFi, which is, which is like 0.1 or 0.3% or Wealthfront, just because um, Bank of America savings account is like 0.008% or something like that. It's like ridiculous. You get like five cents for every thousand dollars you you put in there. It's, it's ridiculous. And um, it's not compounded monthly like SoFi, um, Betterment, and Wealthfront is. I believe it's once a year. And um, you always want, in my opinion, uh, you always want a monthly um, dividend our monthly um, interest rates because um, it, it compounds into your account and then it increases uh, significantly faster than if it was annually um, given to you. So that's it for today's video. Hope you guys liked it. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. If I say anything wrong, um, let me know down below as well. So again, I'm not a financial advisor, so just take my advice as opinions because it's pretty much is all there is. Um, things I might say on here might be wrong. So do a little research on your own before you enter the market. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.